Hi, so today we're going to be talking about integration by parts. So the general formula that you'll normally see in a calculus textbook is shown on the screen. It's the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. But the big question is, how do we actually get to this formula? So to do that, let's remember what the product rule says. So the product rule says, if I take two functions, u of x and v of x, and I multiply them together and take its derivative, I get uh, u prime of x, v of x, plus u of x, v prime of x. Now, let's integrate both sides. So if we integrate both sides, we get that the left-hand side is u of x, v of x. And on the right-hand side, we get the integral of u prime of x, v of x, dx, plus the integral of u of x, v prime of x, dx. Now, let's go ahead and solve for the rightmost thing. Um, it's going to, it looks the most like the integral of u dv, so let's solve for it by subtracting the integral of u prime of x, v of x from both sides. Now, let's recall something about differentials. So if we have u prime of x dx, that's just equal to du. And v prime of x dx is just equal to dv. So let's remove uh, the function of x from u and v and replace v, of x, uh, v prime of x dx with dv. And let's replace u prime of x dx with du and we get the formula that we started with at the beginning of the section. So let's look at some examples to see where this can actually be used. So first, let's look at the integral of x sine x dx. And we're gonna try first u equals x and dv is equal to sine of x dx. So that tells us that du is going to be dx, and dv um, tells us that v is going to be equal to the integral of sine of x, which is negative cosine of x. So let's go ahead and plug that into the formula. So uv minus the integral of v du is going to be negative x cosine x, minus the integral of negative cosine x dx, or rather negative x cosine x plus the integral of cosine x dx. And when we take the derivative of cosine, we get just sine. So we have negative x cosine x plus sine x plus c, because it's an indefinite integral. Now, let's look at our next example. The, uh, let's look at the integral of x times the natural log of x. And let's try the same substitution that we did before. We'll have uh, u equal x and dv equal the log of x. And that's going to tell us that du is dx and v, well, we don't know what that is yet. Uh, it turns out that we're going to need integration by parts to actually figure out what v is. So it's 
we're not sure, so let's just try flipping what u and dv are. So let's try u equals natural log of x and dv equals x dx. That's te that tells us that v is going to be x squared over 2 and that du is going to be 1 over x dx. And we can work with this now. So let's go ahead and plug that into our formula. So uv minus the integral of v du gives us 1 half x squared natural log of x minus the integral of v, x squared over 2, du, which is 1 over x dx. Let's clean up the inside of that integral a little bit. Um, we'll just write down the, le the left part again. And inside the integral we get uh, x dx, and we can pull out that 1 half. So integrating x, we get x squared over 2. Times that 1 half, we get 1 fourth x squared. And since it's indefinite, we can't forget that c. For our next example, let's actually figure out what the integral of natural log of x is. So let's let u equal the log of x, since we know what its derivative is. That tells us its derivative is 1 over x dx, or dx over x. And then for dv, it's just going to be dx. And that tells us that v is just going to be x. So plugging into the formula, we get x log of x minus the integral of x times 1 over x dx. And cleaning up the inside of that integral, we get the integral of dx, which is just going to be x. And since it's indefinite, we can't forget the c. The last example we're going to do is quite tricky. Um, we're going to take the integral of sine of x e to the x dx. So in this example, I'm letting uh, u equal sine of x and dv equal e to the x dx. In the case where you have a trigonometric function times an exponential, it doesn't really matter which order you do it in. Um, we're going to see that this one works, but we can do it the other way. So we get du is cosine of x dx, and v is e to the x. So plugging it into the formula, we get sine x e to the x minus the integral of cosine of x e to the x dx. Now, we're going to have to do integration by parts again. So it doesn't matter how you choose your first one. So in our case, we let u equal sine and dv equal e to the x. The second one, it does matter. If you have u equal your trig function in the first instance, you're going to have to let your u in the second instance be a trig function again. So once we do that, we plug everything in. We get sine of x e to the x minus the quantity, because the negative is on the outside of the integral, of cosine x e to the x minus negative sine. We can pull that negative out, and we get plus sine x e to the x dx. So we can clean that up, make it uh, negative cos x e to the x minus the integral of sine x e to the x just by distributing that negative sign. And we get something that we want to find, something that's very familiar. That negative sine x e to the x is actually the integral that we're trying to find. So let's bring it down and set it equal, because it is equal. All of the things that we have been doing are all equalities. And since we want to find what sine x e to the x is uh, as, as its integral, let's just add it to both sides and uh, push that negative over to the right. 
So we get sine x e to the x minus cos x e to the x is equal to 2 times the integral of sine x e to the x dx. And now we know what to do. We divide both sides by 2. And now we have our integral of sine x e to the x is sine x e to the x minus cos x e to the x over 2. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps.